Okay, well, I don't know if you've ever drilled down in here, but do y'all have these options? Okay, your personal information. You can go across the board and see all their personal information. You can see this is full time. Now, you might see that that might not be right on that person because I don't know how updated AOD was before I came and I found some errors. So, um, rates, the rates may, I don't have any rates on these people, but the rate may not be what really is the rate because I found that some of these people weren't updated in AOD. Um, you can see if they're active. Of course, they should be active, normal, their hourly status. Tells you the full time group home. Um, that's your personal information. This mouse is not like I want it. Your schedules. <clears throat> I know um, Kate and Susan came in and talked to me one day about schedules, and I don't know if y'all put schedules in on your people, but you can, okay? And that will help keep them from maybe incurring overtime if they have a schedule to go by. If you have a schedule on somebody, um, on their actual time card, it'll tell you whether they were absent that day, absent, unsched, you know, it'll tell you on there whether they were in early or late or whatever if you have, it's based on your schedule. If somebody has requested a PTO day, y'all email me and say, oh, can you take this one off? They've changed it. I don't know if y'all have done that. I know some people out there have. I don't know how to delete it. I can't delete it. I don't know how. I don't see your end. I don't, I'm not set up as a supervisor because I get to do everything. It usually has, like on day here, uh, it'll have how many hours they requested in red. Have y'all ever seen that? Have y'all ever went there? Under schedules, it would have the day they requested. What you can do. I don't know if y'all can do it. I don't know if anybody's ever tried. <clears throat> Try it for me because, like I said, this is all learning for me too. It'll it'll be in red, and there'll be like an X, a real small X beside it. If you click that X, it takes it off. If you've already proved it, and then, oh my gosh, they can't go after all. I just am wondering if y'all can do that out there. I don't know. I haven't tried it because I'm not set up as a supervisor. I probably could reset myself, but then I can't reset myself back because then I can't <laughs> process everything I need to process. That's just something I wanted to run, you know, run by y'all. So if y'all can kind of watch out for that and see if y'all can um, delete PTO hours from the schedule. Archives. Y'all have y'all ever been into archives? Okay. Um, this is what payroll has to do quite often when we get emails from employees saying I wasn't paid back in March. I wasn't paid at the beginning of April this day. I didn't work this day. We have to go back on the time cards into archives. You can you have to change your date over here to whatever date, you know, time period that we're talking about. And it'll have, you know, the dates they punched or do times. And if it's, you know, it'll be a long list of your dates if somebody's been here a while. That's what we have to verify to see if they actually, did you punch that day? Did somebody add your time in? Okay, so we have to go back there. I don't know if y'all have archives, but check that and see if y'all do. <clears throat> okay, benefits we don't have. We don't house PTO balances in AOD. They're all in PMI, our, our pay entry. A lot of people email payroll and say, I don't have any, what's wrong? I should have PTO hours that's showing zero. It's not housed here, it's housed in PMI. Okay, so we'll go back to the time card. <clears throat> this, make sure when you're doing your time card closing, you have your deadline, that you have it on the previous period. A lot of people lock the current period and then they email me and say, can you please unlock our time card, I, I locked the wrong pay period. So make sure you, you've got the right pay period that you're locking. You can't unlock them, I have to. So if, if we're not here, then you're just out of luck. You'll have to wait until somebody shows up. So um, here you can see your list of people. Okay, you can scroll down. Um, this is the department, what we call their home department. It's the same thing here, and their supervisor, and their hire date here. 
Here's their badge number. Now I get a lot of, what I do is when I set a new hire person up, I email the supervisor with their badge number and their, and their PIN number. Um, if y'all go in here, y'all should be able, when y'all hit your time cards, y'all should be able to see, before I even email you guys their badge number, y'all should be able to see your people. When y'all fill out, whoever fills out the new hire authorization, and they have the first AOD supervisor and the second AOD supervisor, we set, I set both of them people up under the accounts, and you should see both of them people. Now, if that person on that new hire authorization, if you're not listed as a supervisor, I'm not going to set you up. Now, to add a punch if somebody didn't punch, tell me, somebody tell me how y'all normally do it. I right click in the box. You right click? Where uh -huh. do you right click? On the date or the, the actual box? In the, like the box. under start or in? Yeah. Right here? Where are we going to go punch at? In. Right here? Yes. In. And you click there. Uh -huh. And you punch it in. Okay? Let's say you got somebody who's working 11 p.m. to 7 o'clock in the morning. Do y'all have any night people? Let's start with that. And then we'll just nip everything in the bud, right? <laughs> 11 p.m. Oh, okay. They punched out at 11 p.m. That's how I do it. I don't even type in my colons or nothing. And then I just click away. Okay. All right. They sent y'all an email or came and told y'all, oh, I didn't punch in that morning. Can you fix my time? You have got to have a paper trail. No verbal at all. There's got to be some documentation out there. Handwritten, email, or whatever. This is what time I came in. You can't, no verbals. Okay? Because you don't have no leg to stand on when an auditor comes in. Okay? So, all right. This person gave y'all an email. To, I came in at 7 a.m. Right click on the date. Right here. Right click. And now what you going to do? Adjustment. Adjustments. Add a punch. Add a punch. Okay, we're, we're, we left at 7 a.m., right? Yeah, but you got to change the date. You're going to change the date. What are we going to change the date to? What is that? 14? It says 416. Also 417. You're going to change it to 417. Why are we changing it to 417? Because it's the next morning. Because why? It's at 7 a.m. Okay, morning. it's the next morning, right? Mm -hmm. And we'll just leave it at 8. You can type over it and turn 7 a.m., okay? They just worked over. Maybe we'll hit okay. Mm -hmm. Comes right on in. Now, let's take that out. What happens? Why can't you go in here and put 7 a.m.? It goes to the next day. It does? Or it jumps to the top. Well, what? Yeah, this switches. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, right? That's what you go deal with out there. <laughs> okay, let's see if this works. 7 a.m. Alter punch to become the end of a shift. Okay, but it did drop it up there. It should have been the beginning of the shift, really, is what it should have done. Let's do that. Alter punch to become the start of the shift. Let's see if the 11 goes back up there. Does that work for you? It's a little trick. Y'all know how about to do that? You ever had to do that? Sometimes, and I don't know how this happens, and I've seen it. You know, you see these little stars here, these little asterisks? These, well, I don't know if they're little down arrows. It's on your sheet. The sheet that I gave you, every single symbol on this time card is on here. It tells you what it's for. Every single symbol. That symbol, what is that symbol for? No, it's any okay, you can click on it and it tells you who did the adjustment. I get emails saying, oh, somebody locked this person's time card. I don't know who locked this time card. Who did this adjustment? I didn't add this time in. Yes, you did. <laughs> on at this date, you change it to this, blah, blah, blah. And you can click on it and take it back up. So you can tell who did the adjustments, who locked the time card. And all you, all y'all know how to punch in. Well, y'all don't punch anymore, but all your people know how to go into AOD and clock in, right? Get that punch. Do they know how to transfer if they're transferring from if they're working from group home to group home? Have y'all remember seeing the transfer button underneath punch? 
If you hit transfer, you'll get a list of codes. It'll be like your RAP CC, your group home, it'll be RAP CE. It, it'll have your different group homes. They'll need to hit that transfer and select the group home that they're in because our counting, our counting is not correct at all because nobody's transferring their hours from group home to group home, so we don't have any clue how many hours are being charged at this group home. It affects our um, uh, financials and stuff that we have to let the government know uh, how much money are y'all spending at this home, you know. We have to tell them how many people's working there. Well, this person didn't work there, but they really did. They're not transferring their hours, so we don't have no way of knowing. <coughs> when they transfer, this cost class right here is going to be red. But if you know, and you're, and you're looking at your time cards, and you know this person worked at a different home than what's showing up here, it's usually 5217. Do y'all know these codes? 5217 Sunfields, 5212 Hillcrest, 5213 is Meadowview. This is what you can do. You can right click on your hours. And I have this right here. In the middle of your timesheet right here in the little block how to transfer hours if you know somebody didn't transfer on the clock and you need to transfer their hours to the other group home. to help us with accounting you block hours transfer and then you you select right here you can select your rat CE um, it's usually your group home is always going to be group home 5212 Hillcrest. And you'll hit OK. See? All their hours are going to be charged to Hillcrest. This person was a RAP employee, but they worked at Hillcrest that day. So I transferred all their hours to Hillcrest. So all they're counting on this end, and everybody knows that, hey, this many more hours was worked at that home. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, let's go, um, <clears throat> let's do this. So we've got somebody who's coming in at 3 p.m., okay, and they're missing a punch. Mm. I'm going to lock their time card. You let me lock it. Was a missing punch. That happens all the time. So therefore, we have to email out there and say you're missing time. You're missing. There's missing punch. So y'all can't unlock it. We have to unlock it. So y'all can adjust it. this dashboard. Y'all should have a dashboard. You can drill down into your dashboard. Look, we got critical issues, critical exceptions on Sunday and Monday. Four employees. Well, that was messages. Um, and it takes you right to the people who are missing punches. You don't have to go pull up all your time cards. It just goes right to the people who are missing punches. Okay? So there's really no reason why time cards should be locked with a missing punch. Right? If you go to your dashboard, right off the bat and pull your missing punches. Fix them. You're good to go. Because those people hold us up. We're on a really crunch deadline. With 370 people, I got over 30 more coming. It's a tremendous amount because we have to go through every single one of these time cards. Every single one of them. And then I have to, after they're completed, I have to roll them over to my payroll system. Every one of them time cards in order to issue checks. Trying to think of some other things here real quick and then I'll go through my list. I just want y'all to understand the dashboard where you can drill down in there really quickly. Your leave requests. Y'all are looking at them, correct? You look at your leave requests and you approve them. So they'll flow into their time card. Once you approve them, they flow into their time card. Now, if you pass the pay period deadline, the date, like today's May, whatever, 8th, and we're just now paying. You know we're paying 4-16, April 16th through April 30th. Somebody's got a leave request out there for hmm, 4 15, maybe. Oh, I forgot to approve this. It's not going to happen. I ain't going to let you approve it. No way. 
It's just hanging out there. Never got paid, never got sent to their time card. They told you, I've already told you, because you maybe you were off, you forgot to look at your PTO request or didn't have time or whatever. It's not going to let you approve it once that time's passed. So I have to go in and remove it, and then I have to add it to their time card. Okay, so there is a timeline on these PTO requests of when you can approve them. Just keep that in mind. Y'all know you have to have a director's approval to pay bereavement, right? So anytime somebody um, is out uh, for funeral leave, make sure that you send right straight to a director. Do y'all know who your directors are? Send that email to the directors. So we can get it approved and get it and you can add it to their time card y'all can add bereavement to a card and the employee can request bereavement the same way you request vacation when you go into that when you clock in you hit that vacation button when you request your pto hours off instead of leaving it as personal scroll down click that little arrow and scroll down and hit bereavement okay they can do that um let me find my um You can add bereavement, adjustments, credit debit hours. If they didn't put it in as a request for them, if you don't want to wait on payroll to add it and you want to make sure it's on their time card and you want to show that employee it's on their time card, you just change down here to bereavement, eight hours for that day. And okay, puts it in there. And of course, I can always see again who added the bereavement. Okay. Now, Another thing that I saw out there, on your accounts, yours will probably mm -hmm. say my account. Have y'all ever went into your account? This is my account. I don't know how many of you see military time on your time cards or regular time. There's a lot of people out there that see military time. If you go down here and hit Preferences, I think it is. Preferences. Hit preferences on my account. You see the clock time? Mm -hmm. It'll probably say military. You can change it. So you can change that any which way you want. Okay. Ours is hours, minutes, hundreds. Actually, it should be hours, hundreds. That's what it should be because we are right on the minute. We get paid right on the minute. A lot of companies have a system where you have seven minutes leeway. If you come in at 8.07 in the morning, it rounds you back up to 8. But if you come in at 8.08, .08, you're coming in at 8.15. A lot of companies do that, but this is right on the minute. Let's go to pay entry right quick. What is pay entry? Does everybody know what pay entry is when we talk about pay entry? W-2s you get there. Okay. Now... When I have a new hire that I have to set up, I do not set them up with pay entry right off the bat because they have to have an email set in my system because that's an automatic email that goes to whatever email I have set in here. Now when they're hired, their email may change to a wall residence email. I don't know when that's gonna change. So you only have a 24 hour window to set up a pay entry account to see your pay stubs. And when I set them up, they don't hit that 24 hour, end, 24 hour window, they have to email me back and I have to reset them. They miss it again. Email me again, I have to set it up again. 370 employees and going strong and I'm gonna to continue to do this because people are not hitting their 24 hour window and people have emailed me and say, why can't I get this set up when I'm hired? Because sometimes people don't have an, even an email address when they're hired, I can't set you up. And, and I'm not going to sit here and reset you five times because you missed a 24-hour time period. I'm going to wait until you're ready. Call me. Email me. I'm ready. Set me up. I'm on your computer. I'll do it then. Um, terminated people. When we get those termination authorization papers in, I know it says anticipated term date. We're not doing no anticipated term date. Their last day worked is their term date. The last day they worked. Not the day they texted you and said, I'm not coming in. It's the last day they worked. So when our records, when we show, when we pull up and have term dates, we know right off the bat that's the last day they work. 